the graph we already have on the sketch is f of x which is equals to minus 2 sine of x right and then uh, 7.1 is saying that on the grid provided in the answer book uh, let's draw the graph of g of x so we have g of x uh, being equals to cos of uh, x minus 60 degrees right x is an element of minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees right uh, clearly show all the intercepts uh, with the axis and turning points of the graph uh, so what we're going to do here i'm going to draw the graph on this same set of axes that we have f of x on right uh, so the way i'm going to do it we have our equation here cos of x minus 60 degrees right i'm not going to do anything fancy i'm just going to substitute values until i have uh, my graph right and then the way i will do it obviously we go in from minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. We cannot put every point. We cannot say minus 180, minus 179. We're going to take the whole day, right? And that's not what we want to do. So what we are going to do instead, we are going to move with intervals of 30 degrees. So we're going to substitute minus 180 and then minus 150 minus 120 so on right intervals of 30 so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to start from minus 180 degrees cos of minus 180 minus 60 right and then we should get a half uh so we have a point uh somewhere here we have a coordinate there and then from minus 180 uh we put 150 uh, 150 is saying that uh, we have minus 0 0.86 so minus 0 0.86 will be somewhere here right uh, so here we're saying that we have minus uh, 150 and then here we have minus 120 so let me substitute minus 120 uh, when i substitute minus 120 i'm getting minus one so we have another uh, point there and then if i put in uh, minus 90 i'm getting minus 0 0.866 so we have another point there so now we move into minus 60 right so we have minus 60 here and the y value is uh minus a half right so somewhere here and then uh, i put in minus 30 when i put it in minus 30 minus 30 is here i get zero right and then let me put zero there on our equation when i put zero I get uh, a half right so now if we join these points uh, we should have uh, something of this manner so now you can already see the shape uh, the graph is taking right uh, but then let's carry on and substitute our values so now we can go ahead and join uh, the remaining points and then our graph uh, will look something like this obviously it's it doesn't look as smooth as uh, f of x because i'm doing it uh, with the free hand uh, but then this is our graph you can clearly uh, see the shape and then uh, the turning points and all the intercepts right so we can put the coordinate here for the turning point uh, we can say that uh, this point here is 60 degrees and one right and then here this other turning point is minus uh, 120 degrees and minus one so for 7.2 uh the question is saying that let's write down the period of f of 3x right so let's look at f uh the equation for f of x is minus 2 sine of x right so instead of x we are going to put uh, 3x, right? So f of 3x will be equals to minus 2 sine of uh, 3x instead of x, right? Uh, as you've seen on the other video, uh, we've already established that uh, this value here uh, determines uh, the period of the graph, right? The coefficient of x determines the period of it the graph so for a sine graph the period is equals to 360 degrees divided by c right c being the coefficient of x so if we divide that by 3 we get 360 degrees uh, divided by 3 uh, that should give you 120 degrees so the period of f of 3x should be 120 degrees 
and that's your answer for 7.2 uh, while 7.3 on the other hand is saying that let's use the graphs right it's written in bold here let's use the graphs to determine the value of x in the given interval for which so for which f of x minus g of x is equals to 1 right f of x minus g of x is equals to 1 right so um the graph we sketched is g of x and then the graph that was already there is uh, f of x right so let's go and look at points where when we say f of x minus g of x uh, will be equals to one obviously we're going to be looking at the points on the positive y-axis right because you want f of x minus g of x to be equals to one right uh, you should be able to see that f of x is above the y-axis from minus uh, 180 degrees to uh, zero degrees right so that's the part you are only interested in uh, at this point here right um f of x is equals to zero so there is no way we can get f of x minus g of x being equals to one uh here f of x is one right so to get one we would need g of x to be equals to zero and that is not true uh here f of x is between one and two but then uh, g of x is negative right so when we minus we will not get one and then here uh, f of x is at 2 and then uh, g of x is minus so when we minus uh, by a minus will essentially be adding right and then here we between a 2 and 1 again uh, but then uh, g of x is minus so we'll just be adding so that will be greater than 1 and not 1 but then if you look at minus 30 degrees here uh, this point here right uh, at this point f of x is 1 and then g of x is zero so f of x minus g of x should be equals to one right so that's uh, exactly what we're looking for uh the value for which f of x minus g of x is equals to one is when x is equals to uh 30 degrees uh but then when you are at this part and you're thinking that x is equals to 30 degrees is your answer then you can actually substitute it into your equations and see if you will indeed get one and then 7.4 7.4 is saying that let's die let's write down the range of k if uh, k of x is equals to a half g of x uh plus one right so let's look at g of x so uh, g of x we have the equation uh, g of x is equals to is equals to what cos of x minus 60 degrees so the range of uh cos of x minus 60 degrees as we can see from the graph we have sketched right is um from minus one uh to one right uh, including both minus one and one so now the transformation we're doing to g of x uh we're multiplying it uh by a half and adding one right so that's exactly what we're gonna do here we're going to multiply by a half and then add one which one do we start with we start with the multiplication y board mass we're multiplying by a half right so uh, the range of half of g of x uh will be so minus one multiplied by half obviously that will be minus a half and then one multiplied by half obviously that will be a half right so we have done the transformation now what we need to do is to say half of uh, g of x plus one right so on that uh, range uh, we add in one minus a half plus one that will be a half and then a half plus one that will be 1.5 right which is three divided by two so uh, the range if k of x is equal to a half g of x plus one uh, will be exactly what we have here